What's going on guys? I just wanted to make a real quick video on a couple pros and cons of having either an Oppo or a Panasonic 4K player, the 820 and the 9000. If you are aware or not aware, Oppo has stopped selling both their 203 and 205 4K Blu-ray players. So if you really want one, you'll have to either check the secondhand market or by some other means, and you'll likely be paying almost three times the original retail cost. Okay, let's cover the main difference between the two, which ideally should be the most important thing, right? The video playback. I'm gonna use scenes from the Sully 4K Blu-ray. This scene here is at the minute 38 mark, and as you can see, this is the Oppo. I picked Sully because it's mastered at 4000 nits, so highlights can get pretty bright and blown out. If you keep your eye on the ball of flame right here, it's bright and vivid. It looks pretty good, right? Now if we switch over to the Panasonic UB9000, they almost look the same. I think the Panasonic looks a little colder though. Oh, and my camera settings are set the same for both players. I just switched inputs back and forth to compare the two. Now if we go into the Panasonic settings and turn on the HDR optimizer feature, that's when things kind of change. Now you can actually see all the shades within that fireball, and even that part of the building that's falling down is more visible. Both the Oppo and the Panasonic with optimizer turned off is all kinds of blown out. So to me, the HDR optimizer is an awesome feature. I mean, if I'm reviewing a movie and I'm thinking highlights are all blown out when in fact they're not, I'd be doing you a disservice when I say spectral highlights are blown out with zero highlight detail, when there may very well be some details in those bright parts of the image. Now just from the video clip here alone, there is clearly a benefit to owning one of these Panasonic players just from a picture quality standpoint. If you need to have your streaming on one device, the Panasonics do have apps on board as well, and you can use the HDR optimizer with those built-in apps. So Netflix and Amazon Prime should look awesome. Build quality if you own a UB9000 is probably the best out there. The A20 on the other hand, eh. As far as features for the Oppo, it does have the ability to stretch a 4K image if you're using a fixed anamorphic lens, which can be a huge deal for projector users. Another big one is that you can play MKVs with Atmos or DTSX from external storage. There's also an HDMI input on the Oppo if you want to use it for video processing. It's got support for DVD audio and SSAD. And if you're savvy enough, you can play back your RIP 4K Blu-rays. It's just like having the physical disc. So that's five key points for the Oppo and three key points for the Panasonic. For me personally, I found the picture quality to be the most important thing. And I think the Panasonic wins in that area. Now, if you want to pick up any of the new Panasonic players, I'm going to recommend you talk to Robert over at Value Electronics. I believe he's still the only one that can get the UB9000s in right now. Give him a ring or check out his website, which I'll link down below. If you want to grab an Oppo, then I wish you good luck on that one. Let us know in the comments if you've got an Oppo or a Panasonic. What do you guys think about the picture quality? Be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys again in the next video.